Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. This concludes my description of Hulk Hogan's living room. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang, and uh, for another week, and what a week it is, we have an incredible show coming up for you today. My name is Scott Ackerman, by the way. I'm the host of Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, coming up a little later, we will have a businessman. No, not an entrepreneur. A businessman. <laughs> That's right. He uh, has his own business. He already had the idea. He has already executed it fully uh, to its full potential. So a businessman will be coming up a little later. We also have an art critic, and that's uh, exciting because I consider this podcast to be art, or at least podcast art. Uh, and uh, they'll be coming up a little later on the show. But uh, in first position, as they say, <laughs> uh, and uh, I remember my positions from ballet class first, third, fifth. Uh, but in first position, um, we have, uh, and it's, it's interesting how we usually have entertainers in this first position. <laughs> um, and then we have worse jobs a little later, <laughs> businessmen, art critics. Uh, but we have a couple of entertainers. Uh, they look, they're both, you know, veterans of the small screen, but they have decided, much like a lot of celebrities these days, to intrude upon the podcast scene <laughs> and try to muscle in on uh, the business of pod over here. Uh, they have a new podcast, which is out now, called If Then, and I'll be talking to them about it right about hmm, now. Uh, please welcome to the show, back for her, I'm going to guess, 20th appearance, Gillian <laughs> Jacobs, and first-timer, Deanna Reasonover. Hello! Hi! Hi, guys. Hi, Scott. Hi again. <laughs> hello! <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> we ever going to break out of this hello chain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back to the show, Gilly. Uh, always great to see you and hear you. And uh, look, the other three senses, take a breather, because that's all I'm doing right now. <laughs> Unless you're a ghost, in which case that sixth sense is working just fine. What a pleasure to see and hear you as well. Yes, that's right. And uh, Deanna, we, uh, of course, uh, have met approximately one time. Mm -hmm. uh, one time uh, over there on the Comedy Bang Bang television show, you played a disgruntled clerk. Is that yep. an accurate description of your role on that show? That absolutely is. I still have the purple sweater that I wore <laughs> on the show. Oh, was this something you bought or you stole it from the costume department and I need to alert Corinne? <laughs> Don't tell them. It looks so good on me. Please. Please let me keep it. <laughs> uh, now, you guys are, I mentioned veterans of the TV screen. Gilly, uh, we've seen you on uh, uh, Community and uh, our friend Paul Rust's show, Love. Is that fair to call it his show? I mean, you guys, it was a two-hander, but he co-created it. He co-created you know I mean? it and starred in it. Yeah, it's, it's Paul Rust's Love. Paul Rust's love. Yes. That would be great if his his name were above the title. <laughs> and everyone's <laughs> like, who? Oh, uh, Paul Rust. <laughs> Paul Rust, of course. Uh, we've also seen you on the silver screen in uh, The Adventures of Burt Wonderstone. And <laughs> uh, favorite of my credits. <laughs> and Deanna, we have seen you in ncis recently have which, you uh well i mean i'm i <laughs> have you i'm been not your 80 years then? old uh, <laughs> okay. All right. well, there you go <laughs> that's so it. This, this is a show that deals with naval crime is that right there's apparently rampant amounts of naval crimes happening well, it, are there standards of acceptance into the navy so low that they just are taking wanton criminals it's not the navy it's never the navy it's always surrounding the navy where, where does the Navy have jurisdiction? Is it just like within 50 yards of a boat? What is, what is this? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they have land and sea jurisdiction. Just land kind of and sea? Oh, yeah. The Army and Air Force and Marines, they only have the land. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, that's the great thing about the Navy is that you think you can dive underwater and commit crime. You can't because we've got sea jurisdiction as well. Seems like there's a lot of scenes that take place on docks. Is that fair to say? Not as many as there used to be. You know, COVID is really wreaked have it on our dock work it's been a uh, very difficult <laughs> is everyone just taping it in their houses <laughs> and, and splicing the footage together or what i would love that i would absolutely love it i have a cat who's constantly begging for attention so i would love her to appear on screen <laughs> 
And what part do you play on this show? Uh, I'm, I'm there. Okay, so let's let's list the kinds of parts that are on the show. You sure. have the the brash investigator who mm-hmm. thinks first, not no, that. acts for acts first, acts right. first, thinks later. Yes, not that, not me, not you. Okay, you have the uh, wry, sarcastic co-star who's there to kind of add a quip or two whenever a, a dead body turns up. Ooh, very close, but also not me. And then you have a computer nerd. Ding, ding, you found me. Ah, there Hello. we go. <laughs> Did the glasses tip you off? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, real life nerd in other ways. Fake TV computer nerd. I see. So it's it's essentially you staring down at a computer for long stretches of time and saying like, the guy ripped off the naval handkerchiefs is is outside of the area where we can track him. Is that essentially what you do? Well, I feel like I, okay, so she does do some computer work. I feel like I shortchanged her and NCIS are going to be, re- fans are going to be really mad because they're going to say, McGee's the computer nerd. So I feel like I should have you oh. let you have another guess at exactly mm. who I am. Oh, okay. So wait, there's a, there's already a computer nerd. Yes. And you, you, you thought you were a computer nerd. So you are on a few computers every once in a while. Yeah. I need computers to do my work, but okay. I wouldn't call it. IT myself. person? Computer mm. technician? Mm-mm. Guy who comes in and fixes? Nope, not yet. Not the fixer. Huh. Um, you usually have like a brainy person in the lab who's looking at evidence? Mm. Okay, that's me. Yeah. That me. is you. Okay. That's me. Yes. Okay, so you're Thank like you, pouring <laughs> pouring vials out into the sink going, oh, this DNA is old. And yeah. Stuff like I, that. <laughs> this, D- this DNA is so old. I, I can't tell what it is. It's too old and corrupted. Someone call Bones. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? One of our writers actually used to work for Bones, and I did... The real several, Bones? The real Bones, and I several times have asked him to please put a Bones joke in the script, and he won't do it. Isn't that weird that David Boreanaz, if you take out a bunch of the letters in his last name, it spells Bones, but he oh. didn't play Bones. Oh. I just had to pause because you blew my mind. I never <laughs> thought about that. Isn't it weird? <laughs> do, do you think about this a lot? Hell yeah. <laughs> this is the first time it's come up on this show, but it's a daily thing for me. Um, so you, uh, you're, you're in the lab, you're, you're checking out DNA. Did you, uh, uh, they ever investigate, uh, remember those three sailors on, from, uh, on the town? Frank Sinatra, Gene Kelly, and the other guy? No. They ever investigate, I'm assuming they, they had a bunch of crimes when they oh, got yes. shore leave. Yeah, it was a problem. The Bronx was up and the battery was, but the battery was down. Battery was so down, yeah. They weren't committing battery, so that was good. No, yeah, no. I mean, ju- but just to mention battery. But then they're dancing around with uh, uh, Jerry the Mouse. There's got, that's got to be illegal. <laughs> I never seen on the town. All my theater nerdness is, I, my hackles are up because I've never seen this show and ah. I feel like I'm failing my theater degree. You got to check it out. Um, anyway, uh, Gilly, you ever be, uh, you ever be on that NCIS? <laughs> Not yet. Emphasis on yet. Would you go, what, what like, uh, your offer only, I'm imagining, when it comes oh, to yeah. something like NCIS. Mm-hmm. Um, w- uh, what kind of part would you accept on that? Ooh, this is such a great question, Scott. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I think that perhaps I would like to play, um, hmm, um, ooh, maybe... Hmm. I could be a Gillian, witness. by the way, is looking around like it's a beautiful mind, just like <laughs> looking at the possibilities flashing in front of her face. So many different types of roles. You can see the thought bubbles. <laughs> Perhaps a witness. A witness. You- a witness to what? Um, a naval crime. <laughs> okay, good. Hey, that's right in their wheelhouse. Yeah. Oh, witnesses only get like one scene. Oh, we could that's, start yeah. a spinoff with you. Well, yes. well you, no. usually a witness. Uh, you, okay, here's, here's, I think, the formula for these shows. Go to the obvious uh, culprit first. Okay. They say, I was never even there. Mm-hmm. Find out a piece of evidence that places them at the scene. Okay. Go back to the person. They say, okay, I was there, but not for the reason that you, that I lied because I'm actually having an affair and I didn't want it to come out. Or, you uh-huh. know, I was there, but I didn't do it. Uh huh. Then it's pointing towards someone that they fi- all of the evidence finally points to. And then it comes back around. The first person actually did it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, actually. 
you can do NCIS Burbank. I think that you can officially write <laughs> that, that if you want. So who am I? Am I the you're, person? You're, yeah, you're the person. Uh, look, you're going to be the biggest star on the episode. And who, whomever is the biggest star on the episode always did it because they want that juicy scene at the end where they're like, oh, yeah, of course I did it. You yeah. got me. Okay, I'll do that. Sure. I thought I thought the ocean would wash all the DNA away. Yes. <laughs> Great. That's me. That that's was, me. That, that's totally you. Can I hear a little bit of that monologue? Okay, sure. Um, is this my, this is the final monologue, third final act? Final monologue where they're they're about to slap the Navy cuffs on you? I don't know whether you have different equipment. Yeah, water cuffs, we call what them. What I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> they're ice. <laughs> they just freeze them. <laughs> All right, you got me. Thought I could get away with it. Thought the water would wash away the evidence. Thought you'd never figure it out. Thought I erased all the tapes. But those darn forensic scientists got me just when I thought I got away with it. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> all right. Not bad. That was it. What if we added a level to it where uh, I, I'm not quite sure who your character is, not McGee. McGee adjacent? Who, Deanna, who's, what's the name of your character? Casey. Casey Casey. Nice. Uh, is that a K and a C, or is that uh, C A S E Y? That's K A S I E. Okay, now they're just getting tricky with this. Okay, but what? say you're, say you're Casey's best friend. Oh no, betrayal! Ooh. Betrayal! Oh. All right, try to add add that wrinkle there. Now okay. you're talking. To, Casey is the one who actually uncovered the crime oh. because she was in her lab. She like was in her home lab. Uh, and you mm-hmm. left a piece of evidence in your room or like in the fridge in uh, in the common area. You want you want a little lead in for you, Gillian? Please, please. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Marta, how could you do it? <laughs> Casey, I can't believe this. I, I knew you were a forensic genius, but I didn't know you were this smart. I, I had to. You don't understand. I had to. They were after me, and they said if I didn't do it... Then they were going to get me. And I, and I thought, I've learned so much from you as my best friend that I knew all the tricks, how I could get away from that. But I didn't realize that you had new forensic technology that would catch me. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Take her away, Poseidon. Then Poseidon comes <laughs> oh, and then he rises from the deep. <laughs> of yeah. course, yeah. He has the ultimate jurisdiction over the sea, of course, as we know. <laughs> Stabs you in the butt with that little pitchfork. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow was that powerful. good scott powerful you got the job as far as Thank i'm you. concerned oh my goodness um so is that enough ncis talk i know that you guys <laughs> wanted to talk about this <laughs> gillian what do you think i think we did it yeah i think so i i feel like i learned a lot and <laughs> i got to improvise two monologues um, That's an actor's dream. Mm-hmm. Did you yep. do that in Juilliard ever? Did you ever <laughs> have to improvise monologues, or did no, no, you? No, no, no. They they did not condone improvising ever. It was <laughs> antithetical to my training. What was I? I uh, you know I I thought about auditioning for Juilliard once or twice. What 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 was like the hardest part of it? What's the the most fun part of it? The hardest part of it was probably that the faculty didn't think I was very good um, and almost <laughs> kicked me out. Um, I do what, remember. How, how did they let you know that? Were oh, they like holding gonna... their nose and waving the air while you acted or? You know, some choice quotes stay with you your whole life. Like <laughs> you do well for someone with no natural talent. I'll never forget. <laughs> natural Jeez. talent. I'll never forget being told that. Um, they also let me know when they um, placed me on probation my sophomore <laughs> year and said, if you don't improve, we will um, kick you out of the school at the end of your sophomore year. But, but, um, but what were you not improving? Because normally someone is put on probation because they're they're acting out or breaking rules. It's just bad acting. They mine can put was you on probation? purely for bad acting. <laughs> <laughs> mine, was not, <laughs> mine was like, we don't think you're very good. We're rethinking this admitting you to the school. Yes. Wow. So what, that, how did you? How how did you get in? What was your audition? Um, I did. Uh, or is it just you paid to get in? The <laughs> almighty dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I You have to do uh, two monologues, um, much like classical, you know, and, classical modern? and contemporary. Yes. Okay. Um, hopefully they'd like a drama and a comedy. And then you have to sing a song a cappella. 16 bars or so. Yes. Roughly. Mm-hmm. I'd say. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. And what was your what classical? was your classical? Yeah. My classical was from A Midsummer Night's Dream. 
Hmm, were you Titania? Yes! Okay, as sung about by Sia. What? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember the play that well, I guess. So, so you gave a dynamite audition somehow. And then, somehow. And then, and then after it that. just regressed from there. <laughs> yes, they, um, they thought I was quite bad in a production <laughs> of um, the play Broadway. Um, I got... Very poor reviews from my well, teachers after that. I mean, that. that play, to be honest, like you can't just call your play the thing that you want <laughs> it to go to, where okay. you want it to play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, that's true. Um, but that's not what they were critiquing. They were critiquing me as an actor. Hmm. Um, and they thought I was very bad in movement class, very bad in movement class. Um, <laughs> uh, we were supposed to... We had an assignment that we were supposed to conduct a piece of music um, in movement class. So we were all chose a piece of music and then we performed it and uh, we were supposed to rehearse this. And as everyone started to go before me, I realized, oh, what they meant was like move around in a dancey move, movement way. And I just stood up there. <laughs> you just stood there conducting, <laughs> <laughs> waving your arms up and yeah. down. <laughs> they didn't like, like Mickey that. Mickey and Fantasia. And they didn't like that at all. Got into a lot of trouble for that. Because <laughs> uh, they thought you were fucking with them or? I just think they did thought. Did you just say like, no, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bad. I'm stupid. <laughs> I wanted to do well so badly. And I think they also didn't like that. Um, <laughs> um, they said that I had terrible posture. I remember that was a big, big problem. Mm. Um, they really it, wanted me Like through. when you were walking around the halls or yes, during... Yes, I got, I got yelled at. I remember coming into um, a room and the teacher saying, I don't ever want to see you walking like that again. That was another <laughs> one. I'll never forget. Um... <laughs> So they didn't like the way I walked. Who um, knew this about Juilliard? What a bunch of stodgy <laughs> old dicks. It was not very fun. I've heard they've gotten a lot nicer. But when I was there, it was not very fun at all. So when you ask me what was uh, the most fun, I'd say graduating. Um, <laughs> you, did, did your teachers, when you graduated, did they say something to you like, we never thought we'd see this ever happen? Uh, I do remember my senior year, I was in a play and... To two of the acting teachers there, one of them said to the, I, the three of us were standing there. One acting teacher said to the other acting teacher, wasn't she good in that? And the second acting teacher replied, finally, <laughs> <laughs> with me standing right there. So I guess you standing right there. Yeah. Or are, are these people still employed or um, one of them has passed away, but the other one I do Thank believe God. is still employed. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, I do also remember that there was a guest teacher my senior year and we all had to do um, monologues for him. And he was nice to me and I started crying because it <laughs> bit <laughs> so oh, Wow. Mm -hmm. What an incredible. And four years of this or four two? years, four, four years. I, you know, yeah. you're a stronger person than I. <laughs> uh, I don't I wouldn't have been able to do that. That's well, uh, it was it was also scary because none of your credits transfer. So if they had kicked me out at the end of my sophomore You'd year, have nothing. I'd have nothing. Yes. Um, that is, uh, that's a, what a terrible situation. And you came out of it and, and, uh, like a Phoenix from the ashes, mm -hmm. you suddenly became <laughs> so much more successful than any of your classmates. Is that about right? No, I wouldn't say that, but I, I think just the fact that, um, I've ever been employed as an actor, it gives me great sense of satisfaction after mm. my time there. Well, it's a, 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 an amazing American success story. Uh, all uh, you know, all you need is no natural talent. Yes, and terrible. good looks. I guess is that I, uh, is that what catapulted you <laughs> to the top? You know. Okay, so here's another thing: is that Juilliard, um, the voice and speech training, uh, is training you to essentially sound like Kelsey Grammer. That's right. sort of the goal. <laughs> Um, if you're not on Frasier after your four years, you have done something wrong. A Kevin Klein, Kelsey Grammer um, sort of voice. And I thought, I don't think I'll ever work in film and television if I talk like that. So I do also think they didn't like me because I purposefully never did my voice and speech homework. And maybe they sensed that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, that stuff's good for 
you know, being in the works of the immortal bard. Uh, sure. Willie Shakespeare, of course, I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, out, out, damn spot. Yep, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Time is just a brief candle, mm-hmm. all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there's not a lot of movies made where people are talking, you know, with that booming over enunciation oh, voice. Here's, yes, I remember one of my first auditions out of college, the casting director said, we have to um, wash the stench of Juilliard off of you. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it because you tried that conducting thing? At your <laughs> so confused. Um, well, I think we've discussed everything you guys wanted to come to talk about. Is that right? Or yep. we've hit NCIS and Juilliard. <laughs> Covered um, and, oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. You guys are doing something together. Is, it, is that right? <laughs> Correct. We are. You guys are doing a podcast called If Slash Then. Mm-hmm. Uh, although, Deanna, you were saying before the show, take the slash out, which is what uh, Axl Rose did for a number of years with Guns N' Roses. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's just pronounced <laughs> If Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me about this show. I, I have listened to uh, a, an approximately 120 second uh, long trailer mm. about it. But why don't uh, you explain it to, to, to the listeners and to myself? Well, <laughs> it's a podcast. <laughs> okay, great. I, do yeah, I start? I, yeah, start on a macro level. Are. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this on planet Earth? <laughs> um, for zoom now, out. Zoom but, out. Okay. All right. All right. Radio waves. Uh, oh, no, boy. Wait, no. RTF. <laughs> Dan is probably better at uh, describing it succinctly than I am. I want to hear it. I'm excited. Oh, okay. Um, it's a show. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> oh no! Please don't die! Please don't die on my show. Um, uh, and, and we, uh, we, we, uh, we, sp- we speak to people um, who. Oh uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to understand the Juilliard teachers. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we speak to people who uh, work in the world of STEAM. That's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Um, we talk to them about uh, their work, their interests, um, and we, we learn together. Mm. Yeah, Gillian had this really awesome idea um, a few uh, months back where she was like, let's get a show together that really highlights um, uh, innovative people that are interesting and cool and that also happen to be women and people of color in the STEAM fields. Let's get them together. We're still learning. We're both very nerdy, but don't know a whole lot about science or tech or math. Um, and so in this way, we're kind of learning together. It's really fun so far. Wow. What well, is an alternate title? Could it be called The Two Dumb Shits? Or, <laughs> I mean, comparatively. I don't know what alternate title I thought you were going to propose, but that one really caught me off guard, and now I really like it. But that sounds like it would be fun. I mean, you, you basically, look, I, I try to learn as much as I can from my guests, but it always <laughs> seems like we have something about our, our booking person always books these you know eccentric oddballs if i'm Mm. you know being nice about it uh and i don't end up learning that much about it but it must be nice to to come out the other side of a podcast you know because usually when you when you hear these podcasts where they're talking to celebrities it's like god who gives a shit right but like you're talking to people who are are actually affecting the world for the better it's interesting through this podcast I really don't know a whole lot, but I've learned a lot about Gillian's interest. And she has a lot of um, knowledge about like birds and insects and a lot of really cool scientific knowledge. And I think we're just having a chance to expand on that. Well, Gillian, you're a naturally curious person. Uh, It seems like you never opened up those acting books, but uh, (laughs) about other subjects. You, Everything uh, else I was very curious about. Yes. <laughs> um, who and, and you know, h- how is this show booked? Because these people don't have PR agents, I would imagine, you know, we how, have do, how do you find in- the people? Yes. Well, we have two incredible producers, Tamika Weatherspoon and Kimmy Lucas, and they have really helped us so much in terms of shaping the show, finding the people. And so they have I mean, we've gotten to speak to an astronaut whoa. to whoa. that's amazing. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, Were were they in space while you were talking to them? Not currently, but may be returning to space in the next few years. Yes. And um, so it's been a combination of, you know, uh, interest that Deanna and I have had and then uh, guests that our producers have found and... I I like the show as 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 Diana said that we aren't steam professionals, but we have an interest and a curiosity, and so hopefully you know you don't have to know really anything about these professions or these areas of study. You just have to have an interest and a curiosity, and hopefully um, people will enjoy listening to our show. You ever talk to anyone about three D printing? Hmm. I, I, I have know in about the past, that. but not on the podcast. Did you? Yeah. Is that your pitch? Yeah, I want to know about that. Great. Anything specifically about it? I don't know. What is it? They just squirt a bunch of stuff out? <laughs> sure. Sounds like All right. it. Ask someone about that. How do, uh, So uh, we're a couple weeks uh, deep into this. That You have a couple episodes out. Uh, if then uh, is the show, people can find it anywhere podcasts are mm-hmm. sold. You're selling your podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Of course. 50 cents pop. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, and uh, do people enter if... Slash, slash then, then you got, no Scott, spaces. You got it. Wow. Um, well, this is incredible. And is this a limited series or is it a continuing thing you guys are going to do until the end of time or what? Question I don't mark. Think we've decided yet. <laughs> we could enter it for yeah. a limited series for an Emmy. I think we can. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> they should give Emmys to podcasts, shouldn't they? Yes. You know what I yes. mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean in fact okay thank you should they give is that how you act on your show by the way <laughs> i'm not on a show <laughs> your podcast i mean oh oh um, i know exactly what you mean <laughs> <laughs> when i can and tell I, you obviously have no I idea <laughs> yes i i nod mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um no but i mean i, I understood the sentence you said they should give <laughs> Emmys to podcasts, and I thought I know what an Emmy is, and I know what a podcast is, and I sure, there's a couple that extra words in there that maybe I have no idea about. But currently, you can't win an Emmy for a podcast. So Scott's saying, what if you could win an Emmy for a podcast? Then Scott would probably be a multiple Emmy winner. Well, not at this point. I feel like uh, you know there, there are several several other celebrities who have come in here and taken over the game. Uh, people much like yourselves who are on TV shows who decided, "Hey, I want podcast money too." Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, I understand. It's I'm I'm past my prime, perhaps. But uh, you know who's not past their primes is Gillian Jacobs and Deanna Reasonover, who have the show If Then, which is out now. And uh, we have to take a break, if that's all right. When we come back, we'll have a businessman. So this, I mean, now this is, you have a little bit of training with your podcast, talking to people whose jobs you don't know that much about. Mm -hmm. Businessman is very different than entertainer and actor. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I'm sure their their day-to-day routine is quite different. So hopefully Mm -hmm. you can get into the mindset of asking inquisitive questions about this person well i i i, I hope so <laughs> we'll see <laughs> who knows diana do you feel a little more confident about your abilities well i'm intimidated but we'll try <laughs> by a businessman <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well we'll see uh when we come back we will be talking to the aforementioned businessman a little later we have an art critic we will be right back with more comedy bang bang after this <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back. We have Gillian Jacobs and Deanna Reason over here of If Then, the podcast, and uh, they uh, are, we're about to talk to a businessman. Have you, been, have you been thinking about your questions during the break? Mm-hmm. Good. Yes. Uh, we've had him on the show a few times. Uh, I can't remember what his business is called, but uh, he is uh, more commonly known as the Smooth Criminal. Mm. Please welcome back to the show, Ale Peterson. <laughs> Scott, thank you for having me back on the show. It's a pleasure to see you again. Ooh, uh, it's a pleasure to have voice. you. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. Okay. This is uh, this is Gillian. This is Deanna. Hello, ladies. How do you do? Ooh, uh, much better now. Thank you. <laughs> So, hmm, so that's uh, the, those low rumbles are having an effect on my other guest, Sal. People do enjoy my voice. It's true. They don't. I think it I think it compensates for my appearance, which, of course, is somewhat grotesque as I am completely hairless. 
What? That's well, Ali Peterson uh, Let me suffers. Step into the light. Oh mm. my! Yes, as you can see, I am completely hairless. You'll Why have to take are you my nude? Word for it. <laughs> to prove my point. <laughs> okay, well, you've proven it. Please put on some cargo shorts. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I will put on, at your request, some cargo shorts. <laughs> and a tank top, maybe, at least. I do not have a tank top. I can put on this hoodie. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Al, you uh, uh, you suffer from the ailment uh, commonly known as alopecia. Is that correct? Well, that is actually not true. I... If you'll recall, Scott, I faked alopecia to get out of a long-term relationship. <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry. I've forgotten already. <laughs> so I have I have shaven myself uh, from head to toe, uh, and I continue to do so out of respect for a love lost. <laughs> so there's no current reason why you should be doing this, because you faked the relationship with, what was her name again? Car- I did not fake the relationship. <laughs> faked get, uh, the, the illness to get out of the relationship. Yes, I, okay, a quick summation. I know that, Scott, you need this every time. <laughs> I was in a long-term relationship with my college sweetheart, Carla Fur. <laughs> I got cold feet. Uh, when it seemed that we'd been together long enough that the marriage question was going to come up. And so in a terrible, terrible fit of misjudgment, I assumed that she would break up with me if uh, she discovered I had alopecia. Uh, but I misjudged Carla first. She's a, a bigger person than that. She's not, she's not a shallow person. Uh, so I had to, uh, I had to face my own, stupidity, frankly, and uh, leave the relationship with, unfortunately, her favorite hoodie. And she has been hunting me to this day. But in the meantime, I have helped other people get out of tricky situations by, by means of my business, which is, of course, to help you fake your own death. So you, you help people fake their deaths, not alopecia. Did you start you know, having people fake alopecia first? Uh, no, but if you'll recall, step one in faking your own death is you shave your entire body. <laughs> Except the anus, is that right? Except you retain the hair around your anus to keep <laughs> some sense of your own identity private to yourself. <laughs> sure. Yes. So that that is step one, and then step two and three and everything we've, all, we've gone through many, many fake times. Fake passports, fake driver's license, all that sure. stuff. But you must, must, must shave your entire body first. Right. Can we go backwards a little bit to the, the romance with Carla Fur? Do you have any questions about that, Gillian or Deanna? You're currently wearing the hoodie without a shirt on underneath. That's right. I just wanted to ask the feeling Does of it a, feel like I'm having her on my flesh? Yes, of course. No, no, no. I was oh. going to ask the feeling of a zipper. I really jumped the gun there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you dislike the feeling of a zipper just on your sternum without a shirt there? I like, I actually enjoy the, the cold sensation. Uh, I enjoy the warmth of the hoodie with that one thin line of cold mm. on my sternum, especially because I'm hairless. Mm. Um, it's the sort of pleasure pain uh, principle. <laughs> mm. okay. Aren't you worried that, you know, the smell of Carla fur is no longer going to be on the hoodie if you wear it, you know, next to your bare skin? Oh, you're, oh, I see Ooh. what you're saying, Scott. I yeah, see what like you're saying, but your you're wrong. Scent. Oh. Because, because I'm completely hairless, her scent is retained in the hoodie. Oh, smell is on the hair. Smell is on the hair. <laughs> as Lady Miss Keir once sang. <laughs> I'm a little confused about timeline here. So sure. you, you were in the relationship and then you started faking alopecia? Yes. That, what, did you do it suddenly? Did you gradually shave? Was it a no, subtle? It, was, it was extremely suddenly. Mm. I, I shaved one night. She was asleep. I crept into the bathroom. <laughs> I shaved my entire body, mm. uh, standing, oh, <laughs> standing over the toilet. So all the hair would go down. <laughs> I could flush it easily. And I crept back into bed and waited for her to discover, well, she's a, she's a heavy sleeper. And so in the morning, I had to shout, oh, no, I seem to have contracted alopecia overnight. <laughs> this woke and, her up. And she, oh, it woke it, her up. It woke her up. And she immediately professed sympathy and wanted to take care of me. And I realized, oh, no, I have made a grave mistake. Oh. And so she went into the bathroom to see if there were any sort of 
anti-alopecia unguents or salves that we had in the medicine cabinet. Mm. And I took that opportunity to grab the first piece of clothing available, her hoodie, and <laughs> uh, jump out the window. <laughs> so you defenestrated. I did. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, and I used the hoodie as a sort of parachute. <laughs> Did you wrap it around your, your fist to break the glass open, or did you? I just opened the window. Why would I? Oh, I see. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Carla to knock at the deposit back on the apartment. Have you ever found yourself in another relationship? I have forbidden myself mm. to be in other relationships. I've come close. And of course, I've had one million one night stands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> one million. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a rough <laughs> estimate. It's a guesstimate. How long have you been away from Carla for? Well, let's see. That happened when I was 25. I am now years old. <laughs> forgive, forgive my vanity. But about 50. About that, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Can I ask, where do you advertise your services? I advertise my services, of course, on the dark web, the Silk Road, <laughs> um, the Penny Saver, uh, uh, misconnections, <laughs> uh, very carefully worded misconnections. Um, Have you ever gotten any of those one night stands out of that accidentally? Most of my one night stands are people misreading <laughs> the artfully worded misconnections. <laughs> Can we and hear one? Can we hear one, one of you? Sure. Yes. You, wanting to fake your own death. <laughs> Me, <laughs> the guy who could do it. I mean, it's intriguing. As far as I'm concerned, I would call it up. <laughs> Suddenly, just things happen and your bodies are tangled up. I oh, get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. One time I was able to have a one night stand with a woman who was also completely hairless by choice. And <laughs> it was it was a magical night. I, wow. I just want to say that two completely hairless mole rat like bodies <laughs> sliding together. It's uh, it, it seems aerodynamic. It was aerodynamic. It was the fastest sex I've ever had. <laughs> like three seconds and you're done? <laughs> it was extremely efficient. <laughs> like cucumbers mingling in a bowl. Oh, that's... Please, Yana. <laughs> you're getting me all worked up over here. <laughs> wow. And, and, I, and Carlifer, what, how did she get that name? <laughs> Aren't you interested Scott, in that, Gilly in Indiana? I think I may have told you this before. I'm not sure. It's not ringing any bells. Carlifer, the name comes from both her parents' names, Carl and oh. Jennifer. They named her Carlifer. And uh, I thought it was a, although I loved Carlifer to the moon and back, I thought but it was a But did you, though? I did. The problem was, Gillian, I didn't love myself enough. Mm. Oh. Mm. Have you ever written a song about your feelings of guilt and remorse? All the time. I don't Gillian, know. Gillian, I feel like we were going to get to the bottom of this Carlifer thing. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Which might be my favorite part. It's funny. It seems that most people are not as interested as you are, Scott, in <laughs> the origin of Carlifer's name. I feel like we, we figured it out, though, right? Combining the parents' names. There you yeah, go. Carla, Carla and Jennifer. That's it. <laughs> it's a clumsy portmanteau. And you told them as much. Well, I told Car I told Carl, Carla's father. This right. was early in <laughs> <laughs> And please, Scott, stop me if you've heard the story before. This was <laughs> okay, early in our relationship, and uh Carlifer invited me to her parents' house for dinner. And I was meeting them for the first time. Carl was a spineless, sniveling worm. Uh, Jennifer was a vermouth drunk. She was <laughs> an alcoholic, but only with vermouth. Oh. She was in the kitchen, probably on her third bottle of vermouth of the night. <laughs> May I ask? I, I'm sorry. Yes. What is vermouth? I don't know. Verm vermouth is a mixer commonly used in martinis. Mm. You pour it out a lot. It's a low amount of alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you have to drink quite a bit. Quite a bit to get to get okay. drunk. But she developed a taste for it. She she certainly did in, in the most terrible way possible. <laughs> Dry or sweet? <laughs> I think for her, it was any, as long as it as long She'll as take it all ends comers. In, if it ends in mouth, put it in my mouth. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. There, truth. Mouth, mouth. Truth, mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I was stuck in the living room with uh, Carl as Jen- Carlifer was upstairs uh, getting ready for dinner, making herself even more beautiful as if that were possible. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying to Carl, shaking his hand, <laughs> <laughs> shaking his hand and saying, Carlifer is a clumsy portmanteau. <laughs> As I was doing so, I was forcing him to crouch before me by the sheer force of my handshake. And he thanked me for telling him it was a clumsy boy. Like the sniveling worm he was. Like the sniveling worm he was. Wow. An incredible story. That you've heard 100 times. I mean, it's amazing. I'm sorry, Gilliam. I'm sorry. I was just, I I can't believe, uh, how long do worms normally live? Sometimes if a worm is sniveling and cowardly, they escape detection and they live a long time. Mm. Isn't that right? It's very true. If sniveling worms only knew that if they were chopped in half, they could have a friend. (laughs) Wow, that's beautiful. (laughs) I would love to see that. It's one of the songs I wrote for Carl. (laughs) Really? Now can I hear the song, Scott, please? Yes, please. I'd love to hear it. Okay, this one... uh, This is not the first song I wrote for Carla, but it's the one that comes back to me the most. And I wrote this when I was 26 years old. (laughs) (laughs) Did you ever make a choice that you regretted from the very first moment you realized you were having one of the best things to happen? And then you walk out and you open your eyes Now you know what it's like to feel pain. Now you know what it's like. Now you know what it's like to feel pain. Better get on your bike and help people to fake their deaths. You help people to fake their deaths. You help people to fake their deaths. And then maybe you can put out the fire inside of your mind. Wow. Woo! Wow, wow, wow. Weird reaction to a very sad song. But you know what? Music moves us. That moves yeah, me. Yeah, moves us. That's true, Deanna. Al, are your primary influences uh, TV theme songs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Carlifer, played by <laughs> Gillian Jacobs. Ooh, oh, oh, I would love oh. to see you star in the biopic of, of Al A. Peterson as well, Carlifer. never, never mm-hmm. occurred to me to make mm-hmm. a movie of my life story, but... <sighs> I suppose people would find it maybe vaguely interesting, my story. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, 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 Gillian, you could play Carlifer, and Deanna, you could play, uh, you know. Sniveling Worm. Why not? I can snivel. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Deanna, shall we act out the uh, scenario of my first meeting with Carl? Please. I would love it. So here's the scene. Uh I come to the door, I ring the doorbell, uh, Carlifer welcomes me in and says, I'll just be a minute. I'll just uh, be a minute. <laughs> Pretty good. Who am I going to be? <laughs> uh, you're in the kitchen. You're, you're, you're Jennifer. You're drunk on room. Oh, okay. We right. don't hear you or see you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here's the idea, Gillian. You are, you are Carlifer. You welcome me in. You say you're just going to go upstairs uh, and that you're going to leave me alone with your father. I'm just going to go upstairs ding and leave dong. you alone. Okay, oh. now it starts. Ding I'm dong. just going to leave you alone and ding. ding. Okay, hold on a second. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not continually ringing the doorbell. You do have to. <laughs> do you, do you, the door. Oh, I have to say all my. Did you actions? hear the? Uh, did you hear the previous segment, Ale <laughs> Peterson? By the way, where she was talking about her problems at acting school. <laughs> <laughs> You know where you should have gone is Juilliard, the easiest acting school there is. <laughs> I open the door. I no, see. No, you don't have to. Be right oh. <laughs> what do you want? I'll, I'll oh, say hello, ding dong. Da- oh, yes. oh, oh, okay. oh, okay. hello, okay. darling. Cut, 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 cut. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just take it from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And action. Ding dong. <laughs> Hello, darling. I'll I'll dress Someone for dinner. Fix that door. No, we do we do not see <laughs> or hear Jennifer no. at all. She was concerned about that squeaky door. No, I got your motivation, but it's is something wrong with my door. Oh, look! 
it's my father, Carl. I'll be upstairs dressing for dinner. Were you leaving me alone with your father for the very first time? You can handle it, darling. You're such an imposing, uh, authoritative figure with such a quick wit and what a brain. I love everything about you. My, my darling, my dear, my heart, my soul, my everything. Oh, God, I've, uh, oh, she brought it to life a little too well. Mm. What, a, what a pang in my heart. Here, wow. you stay in it, man. Stay in it. Stay I in it. I have to continue. I have to continue. Yes, thank you, dear. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh god just hearing his voice is ugh, what a worm hello carl you're carlifer's father i assume sure am but nice to meet you <laughs> by the way my name is redacted of course uh oh carl. that's right la peterson is not your real name that you changed my real it to- name Of course, that's my criminal name, my criminal nom de crime. (laughs) (laughs) Carl, something I'd like to tell you now that we've finally met for the first time. Sure, anything. First of all, put her there. (laughs) Oh, your head. (laughs) I'd be crushed. Listen to me, you sniveling worm. (laughs) Okay. Carlifer, it's a clumsy portmanteau. (laughs) You're right. And? 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 Thank him for it. I'm right, and? Oh, and thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Darling, I'm dressed. Carlifer comes down the stairs, and what a vision she is. <laughs> <laughs> singing her down the stairs song, as she always does. <laughs> Father, lover, shall we dine? <laughs> yes, although I'm already full. Of love. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and uh, is the scene called, or are you guys still in it? And cut. Yay! <laughs> Great job, everyone. Wow. Do you have any business questions for me? I know we've talked a lot about my personal life. Yeah, well, I know you're you're here as a business person. Uh, you, yeah. You, uh, uh, you know, you have, what is your business called, by the way? My business does not have an official name, but there's oh. a little nickname that I that I call it, that mm-hmm. I've never spoken aloud. Isn't that funny? It's always been in my head, but I wouldn't mind sharing it with you right now. Please, yeah, I would love to hear it. Shave to grave. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Is that like Too Fast, Too Furious, where it's a two instead of a, a T-O? No, it's a T-O. Oh, huh, okay. Why would it hmm. be a two? I, uh, I don't know. But, you know, it's like no, you a, don't know, do you? a second life for these people. Mm, now you gotta be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, T.O. is like, that's short for Terrell Owens, but that doesn't say anything about your business. It's also short for Time Out, which is sort of what you're taking. That's Ooh, true. That Gosh, so I'm not that's sure. It's, yeah, it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. In any event, I'm just thinking it. I'm not see- seeing it written out of my head. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is your name L.A.? Is that your first name? Al. 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 Al middle initial A. Peterson. Um. So... So you you came on to talk about your business. What's going on with your business now? Just still doing it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yep. Still doing it. If anyone there's no needs, no new uh, wrinkles. No no new wrinkles. None taken. If anyone if anyone has any need to fake their own death, then I'm here to help you fake it. How many clients do you get in a in a calendar year or in a fiscal year? I'll take either one. I would say probably three hundred. Wow. Ooh, so you're wow. working almost every day. You take 65 Absolutely. days off, about one day a week. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's one a lot day of business. a week? Well, when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And uh, I love helping people fake their own deaths. What part do you love the most about it? Is it the, I think shaving? the shaving? Yeah, I think the shaving <laughs> people. Because <laughs> you do that yourself. You're hands on when it comes to that aspect. I do, I do, I do 99% of the body. And then there's obviously certain personal areas I let the person shave themselves, but I am standing there watching and taking photos. <laughs> Gosh, where does all that hair go? What do you do with that? 
Well, it all goes down the toilet. I make them stand on the toilet. <laughs> oh, sure. While I Recreating I mean, your if, process. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sure. And uh, I will I will shave them. And I only t- I, don't, I don't keep the pictures. I, I give them the pictures. Oh. oh. Why would you take them in the first place then? Just to- so, so they can symbolically burn the pictures. Oh, mm. this Because all makes the hair is going down the toilet. And that's not as dramatic. Flushing a toilet is not as dramatic as burning a photo. It right. seems like they could symbolically burn their hair, and that That's, sort of eliminate a step. But yeah. the smell, the smell. The stench. Oh, yeah. sure. Because the hair so is what smells. The hair is what smells. We I lit my hair on this. fire. Smell is yeah. in the hair. <laughs> <laughs> So you're so you're looking for new clients essentially, even though you have it seems like mo- almost more work than you can handle. I yes, but I I would say if you if you have any reason to fake your own death, uh, please come to me, Gillian, I, Deanna. Do you have any reason to fake your own death? I mean, maybe you want to get out of a podcast that you agreed to that suddenly you find out you're way in over your head. <laughs> yeah, I just I had one question. Um, yes. <laughs> Since you are wrestling with these feelings of guilt and remorse all the time, do you you ever feel like your clients then experience similar feelings Um, or Mm. are their circumstances so different from yours that that is not something that they then deal with? Do Do they keep in touch with you? Has there ever been a client that you've kept in touch with because you sort of liked them and then suddenly they faked their death to get out of being your friend? Mm. Mm. Yes, that has happened. And it's uh, mortifying, of course. Uh, there was a guy named, uh, I'll call him Jerry. Uh, Seinfeld? I will not call him Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Too bad. I will call him Jerry Orbach. And, okay. uh, uh, well, he actually has passed on. Has he? Oh, uh, what? It's Jerry Orbach? It's Jerry Orbach. I helped Jerry Orbach fake his death. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he, I don't know who's Jerry Horbach. He's on your he, competitor show, Law and Order. He, what, no, no, that one, yes. that one's been canceled. The original Law and Order is no longer on the air. Um, <laughs> yes, Jerry Orbach, uh, the wonderful Broadway star. And, sure, he uh, was in the original production of Chicago and the Fantastics, of course. Yes, um, he was tired of people yelling "Hey, Lenny Briscoe" at him uh, <laughs> on the streets. And uh, he asked me to help fake his own death. Now, I was a huge fan, of course. And uh, shaving his brill-creamed head was... (laughs) (laughs) An honor. An honor and a tragedy. Um, (laughs) And I guess I was a little starstruck, and I did try to keep in touch with him. And after a while, I heard that his false identity had died. And I thought, "Mm, this is even though he's an elderly man, this is very suspicious to me. (laughs) Deanna, do you have... Any questions? <laughs> That's the sort of question someone asks when they don't have any questions. Uh, I am curious about this one small patch of hair that you have retained. Um, do you feel like it really has helped you maintain a sense of yourself? <sighs> Forgive me, Tiana, but uh, no one's ever asked me that before, and uh, it's made me unexpectedly emotional. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. No, no, no. You don't have to no apologize, apologize for your no apology. question. Yeah. I, I think I'm, I'm the person that says that, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well. Someone, someone asked me a very personal question. I think it's on, on me to say you don't have to apologize for that, not for a third party. Um, Deanna, yes, I, I sometimes feel as I'm shaving other people's bodies, as I am reflecting upon what I have done and how it's led me here. I have to cling to that ring of hair around my anus as <laughs> as a lifesaver, frankly. Mm. It's shaped like one. Sure. <laughs> it is one. <laughs> it's shaped like both lifesavers. Like like the <laughs> the candy. <laughs> the nautical the- lifesaving device and the candy. Sure. Yes. How yeah. how by the way, Tiana, okay. how often do the lifesavers come into play on NCIS? Are you always like throwing them at people? You know, I ha- we haven't uh, had any lifesaver scenes, but I will think just, of this moment. Just to, like, capture someone, like, you know, throw four on someone and go, oh, yes. no, I'm... Yes, mm, yes, yes, yes. Pin their arms to their sides. Sure. Yeah. Make them Ingenious. walk like a penguin in comical fashion. Yeah, yeah, sure. And Would you like to be on NCI- CIS, uh, uh, Al A. Peterson? Would I like to be on NCIS? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Deanna's given out parts. She's going to give a part to Gillian here. Well, no one's ever... 
asked about my acting ambitions, uh, I mean, I don't have any natural acting talent, but I am good looking. Uh, <laughs> Other than, the, you know, how horrible you look right now because of the but fake you, alopecia. True. But if you focus on my features, you'll see I have excellent bone structure. Yeah, incredibly uh, symmetrical. I, I do have a well-shaped skull, uh, despite it being completely hairless. Uh, I'm built like a brick shit house. <laughs> <laughs> That's one part of... Your whole deal that we never talk about all that much. We don't really talk about it, but I am jacked. You are jacked. I, <laughs> you swole, are swole. I'm yoked and swole. Um, and uh, I wish I could. I wish I could show you show photos of my cheat meals because uh, they <laughs> yes. are. They make your eyes pop. Well, uh, if you want to put out your pitch for your uh, business here, how people can contact you, uh, feel Great. free. Thank you very much, Scott. <clears throat> are they on to you? <laughs> Are your days numbered? Do you need to escape? Hi, I'm Ellie Peterson. Let me, let me shave your entire body, give you some <laughs> false documents, and you can start your new life. Look for my ad in The Penny Saver, in Misconnections, and on NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if any of you out there need that, uh, make sure to hit Alley up. Uh, we need to take a break, Alley if that's up. okay. <laughs> Alley up. Alley up. Wait. Al A. Peterson. That's a la. It's, it's, it's like chicken a la king, isn't it? I think it's if, if you think of alopecia, think of Alley Peterson. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it, no. may, it may sound a lot like alopecia, which should give you the... <laughs> <laughs> Almost as if it's a parody of it. Is that was that your intention when I you thought of this? I wonder if I should have called myself Al O. Peterson. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> it's too late now. We're four years deep into this. It's Al O. Peterson is canon. Yep. Uh, we need to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking to an art critic. That's very exciting. Maybe very. A, a, a critic who has uh, critiqued some of your art. Uh, Wait, did Gillian you talk to me for a very long time? Who knows. <laughs> It, it felt like a very long time, especially I'm picturing someone in my head waiting to be able to talk and <laughs> just seeing, Don't worry about that. Just seeing in my mind, just seeing them waiting and waiting and waiting. Nah, he's fine. We'll be right back. When we come back, we'll be talking to an art critic. We'll be right back with more comedy. Bang, bang after this. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back. We have Gillian Jacobs and Deanna Reason over of If Then, the podcast, which is out now. Uh, we also have Al A. Peterson of Shave to Grave. Uh, that is an unofficial title, merely in his head. He has not even spelled it out in his That's head. He is, he's just thinking of the, uh, the sounds of the words together. Indeed I am. Uh, but we do need to get to our next guest. He is uh, an art critic. Uh, please welcome, for the first time on the show, Alistair Brown. And thank you for having me, Scott. Oh, it's uh, my pleasure. This is yeah. Gillian. This is, oh, wow, you're getting a round of applause. Oh, I guess critics are not used to that. Not really, no. <laughs> you're used to giving those out, though, uh, to art that you like. Is that right? Sure, yes. I, I offer kudos. <laughs> great, great. And, and if you were to go see a Broadway play, it's customary to clap at the end of those. Certainly, yes, and at act breaks as well. Sure. I don't know if that's the type of art that you cover. No, or... I, I, I specialize in the visual arts and painting, and uh, oh. yeah, I thought maybe I'd come on your program and talk about some of my favorite paintings, and uh, <laughs> you know, some of your listeners could learn a thing or two about art. All right, so we've, we've cleared the table, and now we're all set uh, for the meal that is Alistair Brown. Yeah, so I'll describe a the... painting. Your, your listeners can Google it, look up an image, and, and I'll sort of talk about it a bit and, and oh okay sure so do you, do you want us you want us to google things while you're talking sure yes unless you're driving okay and if you're okay All so right. if you uh, first let's get us paul Cezanne's a boy in a red vest mm, okay i'm paul. picturing it right now if you could Cezanne's just picture it boy in a red vest boy i'm picturing a little boy and he's wearing a red vest yes and if you look at this painting um mm. one thing you may notice about it is that the use of color is rather good. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it. It is very striking. Uh, he's he's using yes. uh, some some brighter colors that one does not normally see. Yes, it's rather good. I agree. Yes. Moving on, perhaps we could talk about uh, moving on to a wait, different, uh, a uh, different uh, painting. That's, yes. It? Yes. that's it. Yes, I, I, I was going to talk about Van Gogh's. Um, wheat field with crows. Okay. Mm. 
So we look up a wheat field with crows. One thing, and not many people uh, always pick up on this, but if you'll notice, the brushwork in it is rather good. <laughs> Okay, the the meaning his strokes, his, his yes, how, the how long they his are. Strokes. They're, they're no other way to put it. Rather good. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, hold on now. Wait a minute. Now, Wheatfield is actually a series of paintings. It's not just one. Yes, but the first one you see. The brushwork is rather good. <laughs> okay. Well, should we compare Van Gogh to Cezanne? I mean, Cezanne had a much mm. different style because he was a post-impressionist. That's and, true. You know, that's true. Yes. And his use of color, well, that, that was one thing they have in common. The, his use of color and his brushwork are both... Uh, can only be put as good, <laughs> rather. <laughs> so they, good. they don't have it in common. Their brushwork is not something they have in common. Just no, the, just the, the, the only way to describe the quality yes, of their ish. two things. Uh, much like in a Frida Kahlo's Girl with the Death Mask. Oh, okay. Her use of symbolism is rather good. <laughs> like like what? What what symbolizes what in that? Oh, <laughs> oh, the amount and and the specificity. <laughs> How much, if you had to quantify it, how much symbolism is she using in this in this painting? Yeah, percentage-wise and then by volume. I would say 97%, and <laughs> I guess that puts it at 7 liters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to sound nitpicky, and, you know, I'm not an expert in anything, really, but it just, it feels like these are a little bit of surface analyses. Mm. Really? I, I'm not, I'm, I mean, maybe I don't know anything about art, but uh, th this is opening my eyes. Yeah, well, I can describe some more. Maybe that'll Please. get... Oh, uh, yeah. Like, okay. I mean, <laughs> sorry, I'm chuckling. I'm thinking of Andy Warhol's soup can paintings. <laughs> they do make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Well, the use of humor is rather good. <laughs> <laughs> what was it if you could if you could say what is it what is it that's so funny about these <laughs> about these soup can paintings? Oh, it's a painting that uh, uses humor. <laughs> Just the quality of the humor is, yes, is what the makes quality it so humor funny. shines through much. Because if it were a bad quality of humor, mm. that, that would not I be wouldn't. funny. No, I would be, it would be grim. <laughs> You'd be crying, perhaps. Yes, yes. Much like when I watched Grimm, I would be crying. <laughs> <laughs> the TV show Grimm with two hands? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why were you crying during Grimm? I was worried the monsters would win. <laughs> did, did you cry for every episode? Or just Most, everyone, yes. <laughs> what, what about the finale? <laughs> the series finale. I mean, the monsters didn't win in that, did they? No, no. But again, usually at the second act break, I'm in tears. <laughs> okay. But, but even after repeated episodes where the monsters did not win, you, you were just still never concerned. Knew. That was the genius of Grimm. It always. <laughs> but I'm saying eventually you would catch on that the monsters are not going to win. Were you worried that just like 12 minutes into one of the episodes they would win and the entire show would be shut down? <laughs> Yes, frequently. I would always check the TV guide listings to see if the next show is beginning at 8.12. <laughs> how, how, how did you get into to art, into your appreciation of art? I don't know. I, I <laughs> just always been a fan, I suppose. I what, what, do you remember the first? I've been to a museum, but you've what's never been to a museum? Say it again. I, oh, no, I've never been to a museum. Oh, oh where are you seeing these pieces at? Uh, JPEGs. <laughs> <laughs> and why, can I ask, why have you not gone to a museum? That, that I did or do you not live near way? one? No, or? no, I, yes, I live on the Washington-Idaho border. <laughs> oh. oh, there are museums there, actually. At, at Newport, Washington? <laughs> Where my street address is? <laughs> or in Old Town, Idaho, where the back of my house is? There's not a museum anywhere around. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe you don't live next door to one or inside of one, but I mean, just a short trip, you could, you could actually get to one. Sure, go to Spokane if my dad would drive me, but he won't. I'm Wait, sorry. How, Wait sorry, how, how old, old are you? Old are you? <laughs> 27. <laughs> and you can't drive? 
Hmm? I know, f- I've never learned how to drive. Wait, but they didn't offer it at Newport High School. Go Grizzlies. <laughs> 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 but, but you could you yeah. could learn there's as an adult you can adult still learn. driving I classes could, sure but but i don't have a car anyway so it's a moot point but your father does have a car my yeah, father has a car but he uses it for his business what's his business do you mind he's a house painter oh so he doesn't use it during his job he just uses sorry, it to get have a, back and forth a car or a truck a truck, <laughs> a truck. with ladders okay. and paint cans Right. Oh, all the usual accoutrements. The usual accoutrements. <laughs> Did those cost extra? <laughs> or were they yes. factory standard? The cans? <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay. Um, uh, if if you were to learn to drive, maybe you know y- your dad would maybe gift you a car, or 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 you could buy your own. I car? don't think so. He's rather upset with me. From <laughs> <laughs> well, why? Yeah, because I haven't joined the family business. Oh, he wants you to be a, a house, house painter. painter. Yes, but I, you know. But you said but I, and then you just kind of trailed off. Well, I, I was upset. <laughs> at, at, at what? At my, the name of, my father has a business, Brown House Painting, <laughs> after our last name. But people get confused, <laughs> and they think he'll only paint your house one color. And <laughs> I always say you should change... <laughs> You change the name of the company, and he, but he won't do it. Listen, we have terrible rows. <laughs> are there are there any people that think that uh, he will only paint brown houses and paint them in paint a them any color? color? Yeah, another misunderstanding that could prevent business. Yes, yeah, so there there are several different misunderstandings, but none of them lead to customers wanting to hire him. There, right? Yes, what is he'll this? only paint. He'll only repaint a brown house. Then he'll only paint oh <laughs> different colored know, different colored house brown, yeah. brown but. What is his first name? His first name? Guther. Guther. Guther? Okay. Guther. Guther yes. Brown. But he could literally paint a house that was brown, and he could paint a house brown. So and it seems he like. does get a little bit of work doing that. But <laughs> okay. Sure. He always shows up and goes, what color do you want? They laugh. They go, well, brown, obviously. <laughs> has, has he thought about uh, any sort of advertisement or even painting Clarifying. something on the truck that says, yeah. we do all colors? <laughs> Uh, yes, I mean, he hired a town crier once, but it didn't. <laughs> Who walked through the town square, ringing yes, a bell? ringing a bell. And say, through Old Town, Idaho? Through Old Town, Idaho, right into Newport, Washington. <laughs> now, let me ask across you Across the Ponderé uh, River. <laughs> Alistair. Just uh, walked across the river? Sorry, go ahead. Well, he was on the Thompson Memorial Bridge, but oh. yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Are you crying, level Al? Of detail. <laughs> I, I would get a little emotional thinking of walking on a bridge with Carlifer. Um Let me ask you something, uh, Alistair. Oh, well, I hope it's about the works of Georges Seurat. It, 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 it isn't, but mm, may I ask yeah. the question anyway? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you said you haven't gone into your father's painting business, mm-hmm. uh, and this is not to impugn your art criticism, but mm-hmm. how do you make a living? I, I was going to ask that as well. Do you earn any money from your no, criticism? No, I've earned zero money. I'm a dependent on my father's tax forms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have, have you shared your views with any other people, or are we the first people to hear your views <laughs> on this art? I've published quite a few Facebook posts. Oh, okay. <laughs> analyzing <laughs> the works of various artists. How many friends do you have on Facebook? Let's see. My dad. That's nice. My aunt. <laughs> Who, oh, your Very aunt. Nice. What does she no, do? Nice. Uh, she runs the uh, business that ferries people across the Ponderé River in a rowboat back and forth if they don't want to use the bridge. Sorry, Sorry what? Rowboat. She takes a rowboat and gets people from one side of the river to the other if, if they don't like using bridges. What? How popular is her business? It doesn't seem like un. there'd be a lot. Oh, un. Okay. Unpopular. Yes. <laughs> so does that lead to arguments with her? Uh, no, I don't want to <laughs> forsake any birthday or Christmas gifts, so I say, oh, I hope it's going well. I have a question. Yes. Seemingly unrelated. <laughs> Do you believe monsters are real? Is that why you're so afraid watching Grimm? I didn't until I began watching it, and then I thought, mm. there's no way those could be special effects. Mm. Mm. So you are aware of the concept of special effects, yes. but you feel that the special effects on Grimm are so good that they must be real monsters. Exactly. <laughs> Couldn't have put it better myself. That was <laughs> rather good. <laughs> okay. 
It's a visual <laughs> art. So do, do you hope to be paid for your criticism? Or oh, do you... yes, yes. I'm writing a big paper on Jacob Lawrence on his works. And, and what would you say about his work? Oh, Street to Emberia. Just the use of paint is rather good. <laughs> so the <laughs> fact that he used paint. paint. <laughs> yes. I have a question. I kind of want to dig yes. a little bit. I'm an actor. It's mm-hmm. interesting to me that you are an art critic, specifically painting. Mm-hmm. Have you ever criticized your father's painting? <gasps> yes, I, I must admit that I have. What did I you? Went, what was your criticism? What did you say about it? Well, I once looked at one of the houses he painted, and I said, uh, "And he said, well, what do you think?" You know, he asked the question. <laughs> he opened up. <laughs> why? Why were you there? And the I said. <laughs> I was just doing my <laughs> afternoon skip around the neighborhood, and I happened to find a, a house. That happens he was every, after, every, every afternoon. Every afternoon, I do a skip around the neighborhood. And how long I, does that take usually? Oh, I would say about half a grim, so thirty minutes or so. <laughs> and I was doing half a grim, half a, half a grim half with a grim commercials. In, right, yes. half a grim in real life, or half of uh, you're afraid it's twelve minutes oh. grim. No, 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 a half of a full grim that I've, <laughs> okay. that I've endured the entire thing. Uh, and I came upon a, a brown house he was painting. Did it used to be brown, or this was a no. brown house he was painting? It was. It 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 used to be snow colored, and then he had painted it brown. <laughs> so white, white. Yes. And, and, and he, he 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 did, did the you final. Say snow, did you say snow colored out of your love for the show Grimm? Yes, I, I said. This is akin to snow, and he said. <laughs> so he had finished his final stroke, and he, and he said, well, what do you think? And so you happened to skip by on his final stroke. On his final stroke, yes. They said, wow. what do you think? And I said, I would not describe it as rather good. <laughs> oh. oh, that must I, have uh, cut wow. him to the quick. Yeah, so we, we, yeah. we had quite an argument and stuff. But oh, so you, the, an argument followed? You know, yes, yes. It, it did not precede my... My harsh words, it ensued. What, uh, what would you say disqualified your father's uh, house painting job from the rather good category? Too much paint on the window panes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How much? That's fair. Covered what, percent, what percentage in by volume? <laughs> percentage rise, I'd go 74. Oh, that's too, that's, that's too much. That's too much for a pain. window. Yeah. Yeah. Even one yeah. percent. Even one percent. Even one, yeah. He doesn't use tape. He, he just has paint <laughs> as <laughs> <of> ladders. <laughs> he just eyeballs it. Yeah. On a window. Oh God. Yeah. It sounds to me like you know your your father doesn't sound like he has a good handle on this business. Why don't you take it over? I mean, instead of not wanting to be into it it sounds like maybe you have some good ideas that could take it over the top. Change the name of the business. Start using Alistair, tape. Alistair, have you ever painted yourself? I've gotten paint on myself, but no, I've not created a a painting. I, I, I'm, you know, I prefer to observe and offer a critical analysis. Mm. 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 How did you get the paint on yourself? I was didn't turn the lights on as I was walking into the garage, and I stepped into a paint can, and then oh wow, clomped into a the wall, and another one fell on my head. Of course, you know, then stepped into another one. And, Oh goodness! How Seemed many like hands? something out of Grimm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, is anyone was anyone filming this? Did it uh, get sent to America's Funniest Home Videos? Exactly. At all? Yes, I got sent to America's Funniest Home mm. Videos. And, Did it uh, win? I was a finalist, and I was flown down. And what era are we talking about? Saget, Bergeron, Bergeron, Ruggiero, Bergeron. Bergeron. Mm, Bergeron. This is Bergeron. Okay. This is roughly two thousand four. <laughs> Did you win the ten thousand dollars? No, I was the runner-up. Oh, mm. five thousand. Mm-hmm. How did and how did uh, how how was that experience? The flight was bumpy. <laughs> so not so you flew. You you have flown to Los Angeles, California, to be in the studio for a recording of America's Funniest yes. Videos. You have not gotten a, on a bus to no, go I've, to, a, to museum. a museum. Never once. Never <laughs> seen. And when art you were in, in Los Angeles for the taping, you didn't go to a museum in Los they, Angeles. No, they pick you up at the airport. They drive you to Raleigh Studios. You <laughs> sit there and <laughs> and then immediately back to the airport. And then immediately back to the airport. There's not even a oh, that there's not even hard. a hotel stay. 
Ooh. Does Tom Whoa. Bergeron wish you goodbye, or does he even speak to you? Sure, he gave me a big kiss goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Look at that. Honestly, someone should be writing an article about that. Maybe I will. <laughs> Tom Bergeron's lengthy kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was the quality of it? Dry. But the duration was rather good. <laughs> <laughs> right, sure, of course. Can you recall mm-hmm. the, the video that beat your video? Yes. Shall oh, I share like, it? Yeah, would you like to tell us? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, but it was a little boy, and he's trying to blow out the candles on his birthday cake. And then he steps in a paint can. Oh, no. He's walking your side of the street. Yeah, he was cuter than me. Oh, he was younger, too? Younger, yes. Yeah, younger, cuter. Oh, that's got to be. Yes. uh, Yeah, was it just one paint can, but he was so much younger and cuter? I mean, because you had, uh, you stepped in one and one fell on Yes, yes, I had more paint cans, but the ratio of youngness and cuteness Mm. for him, Mm. despite the single paint can, was I know it was a long time ago, but can you tell me... What were the events that went from him trying to blow out his birthday candles <laughs> to stepping into a can of paint? He was sort of a little rambunctious tyke. Sure. Sure. They bring out, they go, happy birthday, g- g- gather around. They're carrying it out into the living room, the candles. Sure. We, yeah, we've, the we've yeah. all seen situations like this. Okay. Okay. Is, is it, have you never celebrated a birthday? Is that why this is so interesting? I've not even been told what mine is. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, I, I do think it's okay for him to describe, even though it seems mundane to us, because at some point it takes a very sharp sure. turn into an open can of paint. Sure. <laughs> but you don't know when your birthday is. No. Okay. And so this... What? I missed that. Yeah, you missed, you missed that. <laughs> His parents have never told him. That's that's what I thought was so interesting. Yes. His parents have never told. Do you have a guess wow. as to? Oh, as to I would guess it's Halloween, and they don't want to scare me. But. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> have you always just been very scared of uh, fake sure. monsters? monsters, goblins, <laughs> ghouls? <laughs> mm. And were you watching Grimm to try and get over that fear? Um, yes, yes, exactly. Sort of an I'm trying to confront my sure. thing. Precisely, yes. yes, yes. Mm. Um, and where's your mom in the picture? She drowned. <laughs> oh, uh, on, on I'm Halloween? So sorry. I do apologize. Um, uh, on uh, let's All see. Hallows' Eve, as they oh, call all it? Ha- yes, yes. I was thinking it was the day before All Hallows. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yes, it was Halloween that she dropped. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm. Yeah, terrible situation. Terrible. How, old were you, how old were you when, when she drowned? Nine. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's Ooh. terrible. Tired. I'm so sorry. Yeah, she went, adios, and then... <laughs> she said adios? Yeah. Oh, so it was on purpose. She jumped out of the rowboat, and... Oh, she was in How your did... aunt's rowboat? We were in our aunt's rowboat. And... Is it her sister who now has the rowboat business? Yes, yes. Did it affect the business at all? Do you think that's why they're so... No, illegal? no, it was, it was buried. It got covered up. Why doesn't she advertise it as, like, the haunted rowboat? <laughs> who covered it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's a traumatic experience for her. That's why she doesn't advertise it as the haunted rowboat. And, uh, okay, but who covered it up? The city? She did? Oh, my aunt has a lot of pull. Oh, it goes all the way to the top, huh? <laughs> yes, yeah. So she does have a, a failing rowboat business, but she does have a lot of pull. A lot in of the political town. S- power, yes, yes. Mm, wow. That's interesting. What, what makes her so powerful? Uh, just an ineffable quality. I. I <laughs> Perhaps. Who's her? Is she married to the mayor or something? No, no. But I believe she's perhaps uh, slept with or, or g- <laughs> garnered intel through various sort of uh, femme fatale esque <laughs> means uh, about <laughs> about the city council. She sounds like quite a woman. Yeah. Wow. She sounds fascinating. So, yes. so uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know whether. Look, let's be honest. No, no, honest, no, 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 no. Well, the weird part of the honest? story is. A little boy, there, a cake is brought into a living room. Oh, yeah, that's, that's where right. we were. Right. So he <laughs> he gets scared of the flames, and what? they have okay. a sort of 
uh, an open patio. They have a patio, that, you know, a big sliding glass door. Sure. Are the flames higher than, I mean, I know you've never celebrated a birthday, so you don't have a template for this, but were the flames They seem like high? a normal amount of flames to me, but perhaps okay. he's just a frightened child, and he, you okay. know, he shrieks, ye gods, and <laughs> <laughs> he sprints away, and uh, right outside on the, on the patio, uh, through the sliding glass door, they clearly had been doing some, you know, perhaps there was wood stained and not paint i'm not sure mm. but he steps into a paint can and and uh goes flying and you know, he goes trips. flying as well okay mm. so that i mean look sure. steps into a paint can and goes flying <laughs> yeah he goes, wow. well he trips loses his bow so sounds like maybe it wasn't just the being younger and cuter you have like a birthday cake that's sure. a shriek and going flying child you know? shrieks ye gods <laughs> yes <laughs> well, there's a lot of stuff that's pretty funny about this video <laughs> i guess you're right it, all right they deserved it they deserved it <laughs> okay. well i'm glad we got closure on yeah. this for you alistair well how did your father feel about this loss uh angry (laughs) (laughs) was he counting on the 10 grand i mean it sounds like his business isn't doing well well he needed the 10 grand because that was about how much paint i had destroyed through my accident (laughs) (laughs) what yeah it it went on for about 20 minutes just me (laughs) clanging around why didn't you stop why didn't the person filming help you well they were laughing they thought this was good stuff (laughs) Who was, Who was the just filming in your garage? Yes, oh, I, I, had a, I had a suspicion. And did they show the video in its entirety? <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> they had to do a special yeah, it was about full half hour of episode. The, a third of the, the <laughs> episode, half the hour. Yeah. Did they take a break in the middle of it, go to commercial and come back and it was still going on? No, it was more like soccer highlights where they'll put a little like bug mm. in the corner with an ad. <laughs> oh, so okay. Not highlights, a soccer game. <laughs> Wow. Maybe that's why your video lost was that, first of all, the producers were foolish, I think, to put two videos of people mm-hmm. stepping yeah. in uh, mm-hmm. cans of paint-related yes. uh, items uh, back-to-back. Uh, secondly, um, maybe two people just got uh, sort of tired. It was fatigue <laughs> of that video because most of the videos are very brief. And that's true. I, th- I think they did you a disservice <laughs> by showing the video in its entirety. In its entirety, yeah. I agree. Down. I agree. Maybe they thought it was a backdoor pilot. <laughs> oh, really? Were you hoping that? <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't have complained. Wow. Well, I mean, what, what a, a terrible, uh, unfortunate situation for you. Yes. It's, oh, by the way, I just got a an email, f- and it's from both Gillian and Diana's parents. What? Oh. My mom? Yeah. My, mo- my mother? Yes, yes. Um, it says that... Uh, you guys are like Syrah. Huh. Wow. How what so? Did, yeah, what does what she mean it? by that? Each of you is a wonderful daughter. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, I get it. I got it. Pointillism. Interesting. Mm, rather good. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did that actually happen, or are you just making a joke? No, no, I've never had an email account. <laughs> oh, no. Why not? They're, so, they're cheaper than cars. Sure, but it's a privilege I haven't earned. <laughs> okay, well, uh, unfortunately, guys, we are running out of time. We only have time, in fact, for one final feature on this show, and that is a little something called Plugs. This isn't what you thought it was This ain't plugs Scott's a little lion thug Cause this ain't plugs My goodness, that was Taint Plugs by Future Destroyer. Uh, incredible. It had kind of a posies feel to it. Uh, mm. so go mm. ahead and send us your plug themes out there if you want to be heard on the show. And, uh, Who, us? Yeah, yeah, sure. I would love to have you. I mean, you're a great songwriter. We heard some of your work beforehand. Wow, that's fair. I would love to hear you submit a plug theme. I don't know if I could emotionally bear having that out there. Mm, I understand. Mm. Um, so what mm. are we plugging, guys? Uh, Gillian, Deanna, uh, obviously the podcast is If Then. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, if then, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, um, Apple, Stitcher, subscribe. Nothing more to add, Gillian? <laughs> she did it perfectly. <laughs> all right, Dad. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Al A. Peterson, what would you like to plug? Well, obviously, Shave to Grave. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go out there and say that's the name of the business. I, I, I it, Hearing it out loud for the first time, I really love it. So if you're looking to uh, start over again, if you need to fake your own death, if you need to get out of a certain situation... Uh- Call Scott, me. is this a live show? Is this a live broadcast or do you record this and then play it later? Because we should get the URL. We should go to GoDaddy.com and buy your the website. Uh, the, for Shape to Grave? Yeah. yeah. Should, I yeah. almost feel that would make me traceable. Um, oh. So yeah. I'm, I'm hesitant to do that, but uh, I might try it. I might try it on Squarespace. How do people contact you when they, sorry, just... Um, Usually when, through the Penny Saver. You have a phone number saver, or a P.O. box? Uh, sometimes it's a phone number. Sometimes it's a location. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's a P.O. box. Dead uh, drops. All of Dead drops. All of these things are temporary, of course. I have to keep moving all the time. I'm got never it, in the got same it, got place it, got for it. too mm. long. How, how long uh, do you also, spend in... in in a city at a time, uh, forty-eight hours. <laughs> wow, so oh, wow. You, that's you move a hundred and ninety times a year. I have very few possessions. I travel very light. Do wow. you like the film Heat by Michael Mann? Because he's got a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to? Plug? Also, why? I, yes, one, one. One message I'd like to send out to somebody very special. If you're out there, and I know you're after me, I'll love you till the day I fake my own death. Again. And then beyond. This is Carlifer that you're talking to? This is Carlifer? I didn't want to spell it out, but yes, obviously. Oh, okay, great. All right. So Carlifer, if you're listening, hopefully she's a listener. Uh, Al out here is pining for you. (laughs) I know you can't forgive me, but I sure wish you would. (laughs) <laughs> pining wood boy i'm getting a lot Ooh. of forest vibes out of that plug um <laughs> alistair brown what do you want to plug um i guess i would like to plug uh, uh two of my best friends have a podcast called mm. if then so uh oh, oh i think you should wow. listen to what if then. Thank you. Uh, oh my goodness gracious! Thank you. Oh, congratulations. Uh, I want to plug, uh, heck, the Between Two Ferns movie on Netflix. People can watch it. That's all I got. Um, we're about to close the plug theme or the plug bag, but we have a new remix. This is by Jerome VDB. Let's Ooh. close up the old plug bag. When you see something open, get a rope up and start to twist. Then you find that you're getting a little I missed You think you're crying and you know what to do Get up in there and do what you do You gotta open up a bar bag Open it up Open up a bar bag Make sure it's not cold Open up a bar bag Make sure you got oxygen And don't Mess around with it, make yeah. sure you don't mess around, don't mess around, you make sure you don't mess around, 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 very nice jerome vdb great job all right we can put that in the rotation guys speaking of rotations i uh want to rotate my head to look at you gillian and diana uh always great to have you on the show uh i'm I'm speaking to gillian because she's been on several times before but diana a wonderful first appearance and uh, uh good luck entering into the podcast space I'm just thrilled to be here. You know, when you're on a podcast with such exciting personality, sometimes you just want to sit back and revel in it. 
Mmm, very good. Well, you're learning about podcasts. It's all about listening. And that is one thing I've learned in the 12 years I've done mm-hmm. this show. Uh, Ale <laughs> Peterson, <laughs> great to have you on. Great to see you again, buddy. It's uh, Scott, it's always a pleasure to see you and to recount that one story over and over again. <laughs> you're okay. Uh, I may ask you about it the next time I see you. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> and uh, Alistair Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, take us out with a little piece of criticism. I know, I notice you haven't really criticized as much as said positive things or really one positive thing. I challenge you to say more than one sentence about a piece. Okay. I'll talk about Matisse's window in Tahiti. Oh, okay. One of my favorites. Great. I think that, um, the color and the shapes within it are both rather good. Yes. Oh, wow. He said it. And that, and that was two sentences because there was a misplaced period in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Just poor grammar. Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>